Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So Valentine's Day is almost upon us. I actually love Valentine's Day. I know there's a lot of people who hate it, but I've always kind of been a fan. Whether I was in a relationship or single, it's an excuse to eat chocolate. Um, uh, but Valentine's Day is one of those holidays that I feel like people either love or hate. It's very hard to find somebody smack dab in the middle. Um, so I thought it would be really fun to do a nice little list of uh, books based on chemical romances. Um, I read a lot of horror, so these are pretty much all horror, except for maybe one, one's kind of comedic. Um, but just books about chemical relationships. Um, you know, you're not necessarily toxic, but not necessarily the norm. Um, so we've got a mix of horror where we have some kind of happy ending relationships, some really questionable relationships, some really scary relationships. But I just thought it would be fun to give you guys a list of five books depending on what your Valentine's Day mood is to read this Valentine's Day. So uh, let's dive in. First up, <clears throat> this book I have now talked about so much on my channel since reading it and I'm like stunned because this is so not a me book. But this is uh, The X Hex by Aaron Sterling. This is a flirty, funny, over the top, witchy, super Halloween-y romance novel. Um, I'm gonna read the back of the book for y'all really quickly. It says, nine years ago, Vivian Jones nursed her broken heart like any young witch would. Vodka, weepy music, bubble baths, and a curse on the horrible boyfriend. Sure, Vivi knows she shouldn't use her magic this way, but with only an orchard hayride scented candle on hand, she isn't worried it will cause him anything more than a bad hair day or two. That is, until Reese Penhollow, descendant of the town's ancestors, breaker of hearts, and annoyingly just as gorgeous as he always was, returns to Graves Glen, Georgia. What should be a quick trip to recharge the town's ley lines and make an appearance at the annual fall fair turns disastrously wrong. With one calamity after another striking Reese, Vivi realizes her silly little ex-hex may not have been so harmless after all. Suddenly, Graves Glen is under attack from murderous wind-up toys, a pissed-off ghost, and a talking cat with some interesting things to say. Vivi and Reese have to ignore their off-the-chart chemistry to work together to save the town and find a way to break the breakup curse before it's too late. I really loved this. This is definitely your looking for something fun and lighthearted, but still spooky Valentine's or Halloween read. We can even call it that. Um, and of course, The Kiss Curse is the sequel, which I love. I just found out that they're making a third book about the third brother in the Penn Hallow clan, and I am so excited. Um, again, I love this series. I didn't think I would, but it's really fun. It's really lighthearted, and it just gets better and better. So if you're looking for something fun and whimsical and spooky to read this Halloween, Halloween, whatever we're calling it, definitely check out The X Hex. However, if we're looking for something a little more dark, a little more horror-oriented, but still kind of on like the uplifting side, I would say read Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. This is my favorite thing that Joe Hill has ever written. I devoured this book. I think I read it in like a day and a half or two days. It is amazing. It is beautiful. It is heartbreaking. It is about a ghost and it is about a haunting, um, but this book at the end of the day is a love story and it's um, pretty much the tale of two great loves, we'll use, put those in quotation marks, of our main character. I think love is the right word, but you have to read and find out why. I'm going to read the back of the book for y'all. Aging death metal rock legend Judas Coyne is a collector of the macabre, a cookbook for cannibals, a used hangman's noose, a snuff film, but nothing he possesses is as unique or as dreadful as his latest purchase off the internet. A one-of-a-kind curiosity that arrives at his door in a black heart-shaped box. A musty dead man's suit, still inhabited by the spirit of its late owner. Now everywhere Judas Coyne goes, the old man is there, watching, waiting, dangling a razor blade on a chain from his bony hand. I know it doesn't sound like there's romance in this book, or even like a love story, and it's not very much the focus, but it's very strong in the backbone of the story. Um, but it is there. Um, our, our lead, Judas Coyne, is be wary when you start off the book. He is truly a despicable, despicable person. Um, so don't let that take you off guard. It does go towards the more happier route towards the end, not to give anything away. Um, but I absolutely adored this book. This is phenomenal. Georgia and Florida, the women in this book, yes, they're state names, um, are absolutely in 
incredible. Um, I love Georgia. Georgia might be one of my favorite um, literary women in horror. I think she's awesome. So definitely give this one a read. Okay, so now we're going to get more into like the not so happy and a little bit more like super depressing. I mean, there's definitely some depressing moments in Heart Shaped Box. Also, please excuse my voice. I have like a horrific cold right now and I just, I know I sound weird. So sorry about that. Um, but next up we have Ronald Melfi's Come With Me. This book is amazing. It will break you. This is such a beautiful, devastating tale about lost love. I just, oh my god, this book was so well done and it's so beautiful and it's so sad. Um, but it really is the crux of Till Death Do Us Part. I'm gonna read the back of the book for y'all. Aaron Decker's life changes one December morning when his wife Allison is killed. Haunted by her absence and her ghost, Aaron goes through her belongings where he finds a receipt for a motel room in another part of the country. Piloted by grief and an increasing sense of curiosity, Aaron embarks on a journey to discover what Allison had been doing in the weeks prior to her death. Yet Aaron is unprepared to discover the dark secrets Allison kept and the death and horror that make up the tapestry of her hidden life. And with each dark secret revealed, Aaron becomes more and more consumed by his obsession to learn the terrifying truth about the woman who had been his wife, even if it puts his own life at risk. This is kind of part like detective mystery, part ghost story. Um, I This is definitely a horror story, but it's more like a supernatural um, adjacent type of horror. Like the horror is pretty much in the grief that our main character faces with obviously some supernatural things. Definitely the saddest book that I have on the list by like Miles, but absolutely beautiful and breathtaking and heartbreaking and just so well written. I absolutely adore Ronald Malfi. I talk about Ronald Malfi all the time on my channel. Um, so if you have not picked up Come With Me yet and you want a tearjerker, this is, this is the book. Oh my god. Uh, like, this is like the notebook <laughs> of horror. Like, I know that sounds really weird and cheesy, but it's like romantic and it's beautiful and it's heartbreaking and it's just... Oh my god, I love this book so much. Um, Ronald Malfi truly outdid himself with this. So if you want to cry on Valentine's Day, this is definitely the book to read. Okay, now we're going to move into slightly more toxic relationships. Um, and this one might be a little controversial because I say toxic because this is how I interpret this book. I know that some people think it's a great love story. I think it's a story about manipulation, but that's just me. So that is Let's The Right One In by John Elvide Lindqvist. This is one of the most amazing vampire stories I've ever read. That's a lie. This is the most amazing vampire story I've ever read. This is the best vampire book on the market. Like, oh God, this is such a good take on a modern vampire. That being said, a lot of people find this to be a love story. I don't. I think it's about toxic manipulation, but that's just me. Let's read the back of the book. 12-year-old Oscar is obsessed by the murder that's taken place in his neighborhood. Then he meets the new girl next door. She's a bit weird, though, and she only comes out at night. Um, I'm sure almost everybody on my channel has probably heard of this book. Uh, it's been turned into, like, two movies and a TV series. This book is absolutely breathtaking. It is amazing. It is disturbing. It is unsettling. Um, it is terrifying at times. It is stunningly gorgeous at times. This book is fantastic, and it's one that I highly recommend everybody read. Um, there are definitely some trigger warnings that need to take place in this book. There's a lot of heavy adult topics that take place in this book, even though it is centered primarily around children. Um, but I do think that, as I've said many, many, many times, this is the best vampire novel ever written because it really plays upon the subtle horrors of vampires that we don't always think of, of how they would integrate themselves into today's society, where they would go, how they would act, what they would need, how they would use familiars. It's, it's really, really, um dark and depressing but it is so worth the read um and yeah you know what you might read it and think this is a great love story and i know many many people do i am not one of them but it is definitely worth the read for your interpretation and i highly highly recommend this book okay last but not least it's probably our most toxic relationship um yeah <laughs> i had a lot of books that i debated putting on this list especially for this slot like the the really just evil manipulative relationship and uh wormwood by chad lutsky and tim meyer absolutely won out um i love tim meyer's writing tim meyer's like one of those authors that's typically like an instant buy he writes some westerns sometime and i don't really read westerns but whenever he has a horror novel out like i instantly buy it 
Um, uh, Chad Lutsky, though, this is actually the first thing I've read from Chad Lutsky. So it was really cool to see this collaboration. This is a very dark and twisted tale of, like, teenage love. Let's read the back. For some kids, Long Lake, Georgia is home. But for 14-year-old Baker Gray, it's just another stop, another town, and another state. Because of his mother's nomadic lifestyle, he's never had a best friend, never kissed a girl, and he's certainly never met anyone like Cassandra Larson, the enigmatic older girl whose idea of fun blurs the line between right and wrong. Being helplessly led by emotions he's never felt, Baker finds himself plodding along dark paths paved by the girl he thinks he may love. A road to self-destruction where vigilante justice is encouraged and bloodshed is an art form. This is really fun and twisted, and like I said, uh, leans way more heavily into the manipulation of somebody who is enamored with another person. Uh, it's very short, so I don't want to give too, too much away. You can probably read it in like a day or two, but it is just the ease of reading a Tim Meyer novel with like some of the brutality that I know Chad Lutsky is known for. Again, this is the only thing I've read by Chad Lutsky, so I can't really speak um, to his other writings. But I really, really loved it. It is disturbing. It is dark. It is very fast-paced, and it's got like a truly, truly a despicable lead. Um, and it really emphasizes the selfishness and the selflessness um, of love that can be both taken advantage of or come forward from people. I feel like there's a very, very um, thin line between selfishness and selfish selflessness when you have a relationship that is of a toxic form, and this book highlights that very, very well. Anyway, so those are my five books to read this Valentine's Day, whether you love Valentine's Day or you hate it. Hopefully one of these books speaks to your mood. Um, hope Most of them can be read, read fairly quickly. Let the right one in will probably take a little bit of a while, but I hope that you enjoy these picks. Um, I thought this would be really, really fun to kind of play up the Valloween um, horror with the love holiday um, concept. So I hope you enjoyed this. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you did enjoy this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and suggest me some great Halloween uh, novels to read about questionable romances or romances that maybe have a dark side to them. Uh, anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today, and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah. Bye.